Who will occupy the position of European Commission President after José Manuel Barroso? It's held up as the most powerful of the European institutional positions. The head of the bloc's executive body has his office in the Berlimont building in Brussels, alongside its other 27 commissioners. It's been their headquarters since Barroso began in the job in 2004. There's one commissioner from each of the EU member states. They operate as ministers with defined portfolios. EU voters don't elect a commission president directly. The reformed rules say the 28 heads of state or government propose a person based on the results of the elections for the members of the European Parliament, MEPs, who are directly elected by the people. The MEPs have power of approval. If they reject a nominee, another must be considered. The position was created in 1957 for what had been christened the European Economic Community of Six Nations. Walter Holstein was the first man to fill it from 1958 to 67, the only German who's ever been in the job. The role gradually became more important, though limited in influence, notably by the oil crises of 1973 and 1979. The faltering of European integration in the early days would only finally give way to institutions that gripped the road under the Commission presidency of Frenchman Jacques Delors. He led it for ten years, from 1985. When he stepped aside, a modernized bloc now called the European Union had expanded its membership to 15 countries. The person in the executive hot seat now had a hand in steering the EU by proposing legislation to the Leaders' Council and the Parliament and in the implementation of decisions. The chief could pick his team and fire commissioners. The president also represents the EU abroad in areas other than foreign and security policy. The commission represents the interests of the EU as a whole rather than any individual state. It is guardian of the European treaties, the most recent signed in Lisbon in 2009. The Lisbon Treaty reconfirms that the commissioners act independently from their countries of origin and adds to the power of the president over national budgets. The latest European Union reforms are referred to in the Parliament's slogan for the 2014 elections. This time it's different in that the MEPs elected by European voters have a final say in who will be next president of the European Commission.